but I want to mention other tools that we use in the online world, the Twitter. Twitter has been very, very important. In my opening remark today, I have said that Twitter helped and engaged a lot of researchers who liked the last presentation we had on understanding uh, manuscripts. So Twitter, it's important to know that 380 characters will be the maximum that you need to put in there. So you need to consider the keywords, what really matters. What matters, not just putting information. Assuming you want to share this presentation today, we have a LinkedIn page for it, or we have a YouTube uh, link, and it's very long. What do we do? Because if you put only the web page, it has taken up the 280 characters. You can't add your own content. So you convert it to the bits LY. So it gives you a short page. So you convert it and have a short page. You can click there, it launches them back to where you want to be. Research data and blogs. Research data is also an excellent way to share. We don't look for jobs on research data like on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a professional in everything. So the research gate addresses academics mostly. So you want to put out your research there, you want to ask research questions, you want to ask questions generally about researchers. You are confused about methodology, who has used the method of this person at all. I'm struggling to understand how he optimized this, how he did this. So you get a lot. You may even be surprised that the author is already there. They will start giving you, you may have 20 responses and then you filter and remember to say thank you. Some of us are ungrateful. Remember your character is being enjoyed just as you are in the world. The visible world is also being enjoyed in the online world. When we ask questions, who can help me? Who has done a study on watermelon? I'm trying to maybe synthesize something, let me say, for those who organic chemistry, who like to have some synthesis. And she is struggling to know what solvents are the most current, maybe they are less toxic to the environment or something. Just go there and ask the research community. You will get a lot of responses. And then you say, Thank you, it is very useful. It is very useful. Give feedback, not just, oh, sometimes a very busy can vote or is accepted. But don't make it your character, because as you have a character here, you can also have a character online. So if what you can do to every post is, up, up, down, you are a lazy person. Those who are assessing you will also know that you are lazy. So they don't want to work with people, except those who are looking for lazy folks, then they can come to you. So you want to make sure that you are balancing the video. They see only emojis. When the emojis are able to convey your message at that point in time, they shouldn't be your class character. Blog. The other time we got the, we got the Conversation Africa, from South Africa to train us on writing blogs. This is another helpful way that we can grow our online presence to write blogs, to bring down our science, to reel down, so that it can become like citizen science, that anybody can pick up that piece and understand what we're doing. What, what, what contribution are you making to the world? So they can understand that in a simple way, no jargons. This is what blogs does for us. So you write and keep writing and rewriting, give people to review, make contributions to what you have done. You'll be very much amazed that all your writing skills will be brought to naught. So if you want to write blog, you make sure that your content has to be continuous. You don't start blog today and it's okay, let me try it out, you post. After getting attraction, you have people come to your page and then you abandon them. It's just like in the real world. You say, I want mentees. Mentees, who will sign up under me and you have five, five signings and you abandon them, travel overseas or get home with another career. You don't care about them. It's the same thing that happens. So if you know you're going to take out time to begin blogging as a scientist, you have to be serious. Design your content maybe in the next one month before you roll out so that they are waiting, you whet their appetite and you feed them. You make sure that they love this one and another one is coming. It doesn't just end there. This is what bloggers do. They catch you. And then you also make the money by doing uh, so. You have people who want to advertise on your page because a lot of people are reading what you're writing. So this is very important. Orchid. So Orchid is also a very great way for us to keep our online presence up. Because it gives us a unique, a unique identifying number. So, and that number I said here, 
will give you credit for all your works. Whether you had a maiden name, whether you had a name you never liked again and wish to do change of name. Some persons were asking me in the last presentation I gave on online presence. So what is my advice? I have changed my name twice and I have content I've created. The orchid is a very good one for you. Because that unique number given to you will identify you within the scientific community, not your name. So your name is helpful, but that unique number in terms of publications, in terms of um, like preprints, pre all the things that will have DOIs, so you can identify them here with the orchid, the unique number. So why don't you consider, if you don't have one today, create one so that you can have a unique identity. And on all your submissions on journals, Blue journals will ask you the orchid number if you have. So you put it there, they link it. If you eventually get accepted, it will be linked to other content that you have. Impact story. Impact story is another good one, which all the content that you have, the web content, the blogs, not just your publications, and how people are citing you, how people are interacting with your content, it keeps the bring them together. That's why it is called impact, impact story. It is a tool. So you may like to consider uh, using impact story. Kudos is another one that is very good. Um, technical tips, please keep it down. Shut down the person who is making it. Okay, thank you. So the kudos helps to track your citation. And another thing they do very well is to advertise your content. If you have an account with Kudos, so they will advertise on different platforms that you have. People can see your content and they improve the possibility of getting read that content and getting used and then getting cited. People may use your work, but they may not cite it. And it's okay too. So you can get cited, you can get read, you can get listed. So kudos very good. Fixture is another one that even gives you a number so that you can link to your CV. Fixture. So you can post videos, a lot of data that will generate you're not writing paper. So you can go to Fixture and create a number for them. So they can also give you credit when people use those words. They are not published in any paper. So you can go to Fixture and register them. So it you becomes your own content. You put your your picture, your picture link on your CV. So people can also follow that link to see more content you have beyond the paper publication. So as I said, I'm going to move, move back to LinkedIn. So I stumbled onto this beautiful lady, uh, Dr. Toy Ujitola. So what I want to highlight on this LinkedIn page, you know, when I see her, um, the first thing that came to my mind, uh, she's a serious researcher in engineering. I wasn't sure it's engineering. So I went down to read, I found out that she did something and got a patent. And I believe that the equipment you can see behind her has to do with her patent. Um, Dr. Dutta, are you here? She just, okay, she just passed. Okay, so I believe that that has to do, because she fabricated an equipment for, I don't remember what it is, in petroleum engineering. So it's a good, it's a good step to put it behind you. So people can ask what is this equipment when they are connecting with the little client. Tell them I have a pattern. I fabricated, I use it to produce something and they can connect more. What can I do with it? So another thing I can pull out there that she's an early career researcher. So when we are early career and mid career, we like a lot of titles. Our PhD are engineer. So at the earlier stage of our life's career, degrees matter a lot to us. So what you showcase is the degree, the certification to stop. You push it before you, people see the degree before they see you. This is very real in our lives. So but when you move on, you see that people start leaving the title behind them and now the works that they do will be the ones selling them because it's the work they do, how they interact with the society. And in this case, with the online world, it's what will be selling them. No longer the degree, the title, the appellations that we have. So I found out that she has shown, which is very good, that she has some affiliation with MIT, with ETT, 
and she has a recent position, appointment as an assistant director in Emerald Energy Institute, where we are today. So if you look there, you can see that she says she's an inventor of the first hybrid loop in Nigeria, and that exactly is what I'm talking about. So that should be what we have behind her, the hybrid loop in Nigeria, the very first. So she's announced who she is, so she can welcome people to the page. I do want to put, I opened up some LinkedIn pages and nothing is there, but I do want to bring those people so they don't think I want to bring them down. But it would have been for studies. People go to your page, they don't find anything there. It's just your name and things that are more important. If you don't want your professional curation or your content to be well assessed and used, please do not come to LinkedIn. It's only for professionals. We don't go there to do social media. This her photo is very beautiful, but would have benefited more looking straight at the camera. So we want you to have a professional headshot in LinkedIn looking straight and not this way or that way. It's not the time to do this way, it's not the time to do this way. It's not the time to hold your husband, hold your wife, hold your girlfriend, hold your baby dog, dogs, cats. It's not the time to put a football because it's a fan or JC. No. That is not the space to do that. You can do that on your Facebook and some other social, purely social platform. But for LinkedIn, we want you to be very professional. So good headshot, people can see how you do. And it needs to be updated. Imagine if you're 25 years today and you create this. After 25 years, you must have got more mature at 50. And you still have the 25 year picture. And people are looking for those who serve on the board. They say, I want to mature people who serve on the board. And your content is saying, MIT director of this, you're looking like you're that person. But that picture says, This is the baby. No, we can't bring that person here. Because you need some maturity, experience that comes from age. So you have a lot of the opportunity. You have to make sure that you spend time to keep curating your content to represent holistically who you are on the online world. So you can see that our toy has something with SB Quadacos technical meeting. So this is very good skills. What you are doing need to be updated there. So people who view her profile, you see Titi Layo, you see um, uh, Arike Victor, you see Dr. Jolo Bonna, who is just next to our door. So these people viewed her profile. Maybe they needed to do something for her or with her or you know, and they just went to her page. Like me now, if she looks, she'll find that I viewed her profile because I viewed it last night to get this page. So when you view the profile, people will alert you. But sometimes, those who are professional members, because you can pay to be a professional member, sometimes they prefer to be discreet, especially the headhunters. They don't want people to know that you came there. So you don't find people who work there and start worrying their lives. So they like to go discreetly, so LinkedIn can only tell you that 10 people view your profile. When you click, they won't tell you. They say people in the energy industry, people in the, because the people have professional accounts and they have turned off their status to be seen by everybody. So, but if you get into the professional status, you can also see those persons. So we decide what, but you can do a lot with the uh, free uh, version of the LinkedIn. So the aspects I want you to highlight are three in branding your personality in the online uh, world or page. So that would be building your brand. So building your brand would be highlighting your background, your experiences. What is the background? It came from this. It's not a lot of story with your village background because you want to tell a story about science, about research. So it's your background in the research. Maybe you've navigated from the industry to university. That's very important information. So you have to keep the background and then you have to put your experiences. The experiences you have, appointment. Don't just put, I was assistant director, I was head of department. What did you do? So if you put, I said that the head of department of biochemistry between 2020 and 2021, um, during which I transformed the maybe presentation of all the grad students to maybe using smart board 
and exposing the students to something maybe um, exchange programs with the sister university like UST or they started a discussion with the students appreciated so much. I got the students to own projects that they would like to do. I got all the staff buy into something. So same what you did at the head of the department so that those who are looking for managers can hire you because you bring value, not just because I had a student being a manager, so I should also qualify to be a manager. So that's how you bring your experiences. What is your thought leadership? Thought leadership to develop that, the kind of content you post will gradually start representing you. And the interaction you have with posts also will build some kind of thought leadership around you. So you say people talk about qualities, and you go there, you start talking, engaging, and saying, uh, man, how some people have, have led, now I want people, they already knowing that you are a finalist. So the top leadership, you don't need to write it down, people will see your top leadership and know what you are capable of doing, the thoughts in you. So that I didn't write it, they can be, you can be decoded from the kind of interaction that you do. Advice for developing your strategy to promote expertise, the strategy, how to do, how to do, what are the to do's that you design for yourself to promote the strategies that you would like to get to why you came to LinkedIn. Because so you have to ask yourself that question, how are you? Where am I coming from? Where am I heading to? When you answer those questions, what are the strategies to get to? destination X from Y. So those strategies to curate them into something that you can practice and live by it. So even if you are sick, if you have agreed with your person that you will go to LinkedIn once a week, please try to go. If it's twice a week, whatever frequency, try. From there you can improve and go there every day. It's important that you can go there if you can. So you control your brand, you have to create it because we say we want to develop our footprint and also maintain it. Some persons develop, they can maintain it crashes. So we want to develop and also create and maintain to see that we stand the state of time. Because automatically we always care about sustainable development goals. It has to be sustainable. So you control your brand, like you see the young men and women in the circle. We are all researchers. So you have a brand, how do you control the brand? To see that you are the person in charge of that brand that you created. You highlight what you want people to see. When we get to the kinds of footprint that we have, I will tell us more about how to control what we don't want. People can post a content about you that you don't like. You don't need to get into fights. There are many ways to drown that content without you to really not picking up a fight with anybody. You can drown, you can focus on what you want people uh, to know about you. So highlight what you want as you have decided and then customize your information for your career path, where you're heading to. If you want to be, uh, let's say, a government uh, policy maker, so you have to create that career path as you're harvesting your research keep tilting towards policies where you are heading to. So all the content that you post, even when they are not related, you have to find that part that takes them to your ultimate destination. This is very good that you do. And then, you decide whether you have connecting. I don't want to say raise your hand because I know a lot of us are already there. But if you are not there, I uh, will forgive you today, but after today, you go create an account. Because there's also pressure that comes to it. You know, the friends are asking you. One friend I have on LinkedIn posted awards that they have won. And somebody now asked, uh, please, what did you do to win this award? And it was a, a predatory award. The person could not answer. I wrote the person and said, somebody write my person reminded. Said, I won't answer. So, when you want to be a civil researcher, people come with their predatory awards rejected. You are bigger than that. People can't tell you, award of, um, award of 
development leadership. What does that mean? They want to give you predatory awards to get your money, to get your nod or your buy-in into getting some form. You reject it outright. You don't take such a award. In Nigeria, there are a lot of people write us letters. If you want platinum club, 50,000. <laughs> you want gold, 100,000. You want which other one silver, maybe 10,000. And people pay money to go receive. How do people give you award and pay money? Mm. Any award you receive and you pay money is more than a waste of place. You don't pay money to receive an award. Award is given in recognition of what you have done. Therefore, you pay no money. So people should put money on you, resources on you, to recognize because the essence is to encourage people who would like to do what you're doing since they have identified that it is actually good. So we need to think about that. And your rules and titles listed in your in your profile. A picture, a beautiful picture. I don't accept anybody who doesn't have a picture on LinkedIn. If you write me request to add you to my world, I don't accept you because you have to have a good headshot. A summary. Have to have a summary. If you look at um, the image I'll show in the next slide, it summarizes chemistry about carbon. So you have to have a summary. In essence, what are you saying? That is the summary. Details about each of the positions. I've said that in earlier slides. Goals. Let the reader know a little bit about you, not so much. Help the reader to help. Because either you're looking for a job or you want to take the job you're offering. Then you're looking for collaboration, hand of collaboration, you're giving or you're receiving. So help them to help you. You came there asking for help. They also want to give jobs. They're also looking for help to get the right people to do that job. So they need help. Provide a personal narrative about your career interest, why you're interested. I'm really passionate about chemistry because everything in life has got a little bit of chemistry. And like a growing child at this and that and that, they said I was very good in this and I could do X, Y, Z. So some interest navigates. So they see that there's an enduring interest. It's not going to be cautious so soon because somebody can be very excited about something and then they abandon it and go away. So this career interest narrative help. Provide insight about your background and skills that you have felt. What are the skills? Some persons you ask them their skills, they don't know no skills. What skills do you have? So you need to think about what skills, what are the skills you have. You list them on your CV, which will have the skills. So on your LinkedIn, we should also have that. So personalize the summary, it shouldn't be generic. Like, I am a team player, that was for right. I'm a team player looking to connect. Who told you you're a team player? Let people tell you you're a team player. You can't be the one telling you, so I'm a team player. Yeah, when you get into argument, you can say that because from what people are saying and me being able to work with people on that different uh, environments and diversity points. So that can totally inform you that you're a team player, but it's not something you put forward to an employer and examine what are they. Tell me a little bit about you. I'm a team player. Tell what you have got. Let them assess who you are. So this is a summary of carbon that carbon is a form. Because it's everywhere, you can use that appreciate that carbon is actually a form. It's everywhere we can imagine. So chemists be proud to say carbon is a form. So that's why we want you to think about that summary that will present the overall goal of what you want to achieve, like that carbon is a form. So I got a summary session of someone who said accomplished collaborative medicinal chemistry. So I could say accomplished, you are accomplished. You should be able to show evidence that you are an accomplished person. If you're a researcher in your field, you are known in your field. You receive some recognitions and you have built that field. So you don't just write accomplished for writing sake. And person said collaborative, that means can look at the person research and we see that collaboration on what, on what the person is doing and a lot of uh, developmental efforts with different kinds of persons. So working with a successful team partnership, we deliver free clinical candidates in neuroscience and finance targets. So already I'm knowing this person is close to chemistry, biochemistry, extensive experience working with international CROs. So this person is showcasing uh, the 
the skill of working with people of different backgrounds, manage a project work for fee, for service. So not free. That means the person has placed value on himself or herself that it is for a, a fee, not a voluntary. Then co led the discovery work. So the person has become a principal investigator or co investigator. So these are things that we should push out in our summary session. So it has a track of excellence in problem solving analysis, uh, patents, and publications. So that means when they go to your publication, they will see that you have a lot of quotes in there. Papers. Not when you say I have a track of computation and they are all predatory journals. Uh, so we have to watch and correct that. Are you with us? Yeah. So, video. We need to see that the videos we push out will be targeting what we want people to see. Maybe you have the gift of oratory. That was the one to show. You can play a two minute video talking about some research and they see your oratory skills that you can explain any concept that you understand very well to the understanding of non-experts. So that may be your target for that review. You may be trying to target people to see that you work with a particular group, maybe children. You have a video with children. So you are trying to attract those who do projects for children and you are the right person. So make sure that that video has something you want to see. Like people like to go to poster when they go for conferences, if they feel they can't communicate orally, so they prefer to go to poster. But these days, posters have been rejected. That we now have uh, a spotlight. You can go to do three minutes spotlight before the real poster. And as you're having a lot of traction to your spot, people asking you questions and you will keep talking. Maybe you have a stage fright, you don't want platform, so you can go to the poster. So show videos that will communicate further. So we're trying to see that you utilize everything, images, videos, emojis, to show who you are. Upcoming events, flash them. I saw for Sexual flash an event for um, for Yes, yeah, so she has been sharing that upcoming presentation, published papers. And I like it that she does, it shows that she's not very selfish. So when you flash for the people's events, I saw for some of the and I saw a uh, Ijoma Vincent Apple's that presentation or something. It showed the community that you are not just selfish. The only thing you post is your content. So you can post other people's content. And also showing people that you believe in the content. Don't post the content because it's your sister's content or brothers or husbands or wives, no. But because you also buy into the concepts or the goal aligned with your own goals. So you share and reshape, please. Um, awards, you present your awards. I saw a uh, digital award, attendance at conference, meetings you organize. So you can also know that you don't only attend meetings, you also organize meetings. These are skills that you're projecting without saying it. Mention relevant animals and many others. So I tried to get this LinkedIn profile too. So when I looked at this LinkedIn profile, the first thing that I, I could appreciate here is that she's an advanced career level woman. Her name is just Ruth Mary Open. So she put it there. And you can see her headshot, really very beautiful. You can see the two years. So that's very good. And we smile. We don't smile a lot on professional pages. I mean, except you're being given an award or some celebration that are important in your story or flash. But the, the DP shouldn't be that one that you smile, you're laughing out so hard. But this is very good uh, smile. So it's professional. So she wants you to know that she's a consultant. She's a medical doctor. So you go down there, you see training to the laboratory in ultrasonic, ultrasound training. And then National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria. She has people who are looking, because it's my page, you see my page in all the pages I call. But I'm viewing them from my page. So they also have told look like a tsunami. So you can it can happen. I don't think it's ever happened to me. So it shouldn't happen to you. That the whole week nobody knew your profile. That means you didn't cross anybody's mind who remembered you to think about you, to find out what you do, to confirm. So I may be looking for your phone number, for your email address, for something, and they go everywhere online finding you. So it can include the LinkedIn. Imagine if your page is deficient of those details, so they won't get it. And you miss to become a missed call. The opportunity will be missed forever. So we don't want to do that. And you see her search. 
Has that side still something she belongs to a professional organization? They must be the side. We have those awareness. So these are the kind of things you can communicate using uh, pictures. So I also um, strolled into this one, uh, um, Professor Mbuka. So I saw she's going to change this picture. <laughs> so she's going to change this picture. But I also found that this is an advanced career researcher. No title to introduce her. She's Florence Mbuka. And then she went on to say that she's a professor at the University of Port Harcourt. And to see her experiences, she has worked in federal and state university. And um, look at that uh, video I talked to you about. She probably celebrated the conferment on her mentee, her wedding mentee, who has also become a professor. So she's proud. So you can celebrate the success of other people. It's a skill that you can learn in school. So we should also learn this skill and show it. So uh, Kura Kamono, who is a member, has looked at her profile. Rebecca Kasumo, I know her, has also viewed her profile in the last week. Uh, Plesh Monyege, the parent of my college, has looked at her profile. She may not know. These people are going to look for her. Something made them go looking for her. So we should do the proper curation of our pages so that we can, we can see how people are interacting with our content. So I say here that new investigators to sell themselves as well as the science. That's why I talk about the degrees, the certification. If you're a new investigator, early career, or transiting to mid-career, you should sell the science as well as themselves. So you sell yourself, you sell the science. But the advanced careers, career researchers, will sit on their laurels. So this is the difference between the early career and the advanced career. So where are you? What are you? Why are you? Where are you heading to? You have to think about that. So I also put this URL to tell us that some of us don't have personal web pages. I have a web page. I didn't create it. But what I'm trying to say is that if you don't have a web page, LinkedIn is enough. If you create it very well, if you go there to do your summaries, to do your skills, you don't need a website. They can find everything there. So under your profile, if you go to your profile, under your profile page, the picture underneath, you see a URL. So click on this and say edit. When you say edit, replace with your name, the first name and last name. That will change your URL and will be there. All the time people click on your page, they will find. Uh, this URL. I didn't find it on Boston I didn't find it on uh, Roses, I didn't find it on Dollars. So you can do that. So you can have your URL sitting underneath your image. Immediately uh, we need this if you have time immediately. So just do it is very simple. So when they ask you, because the application to me, they ask us to put our web page and we don't have any leave it as you don't want anything to make you feel that you don't qualify because we are great scientists, we qualify. So create them, we don't need money to create. You just to find time and keep populating. So I put some of this picture to show what teachers can do. I may just put up this picture. Some of them are my social media, uh, different places. So when I show this, what it means to the people who are looking at it. This person does community kind of work, rural community. Okay, working with other people for so UNICEF, I was responding to flow here, and then youth leader welcoming me to the community there, and then um, presenting my research to the chiefs of the communities, and then you see Kola, the regular thing we do when we visit um, typical traditional people, and then the chief conducting me to see the side that we're going to work on. So I may not speak to it, I may just flag this picture and only one sentence. People can decide, and people tell stories from different sides of an elephant. That's how they tell. But there are likelihood that they will tell the kind of story you want. So, in situ interventions, if I want to show that as I'm doing phytoremediation and bioremediation, I've gone to the field, not just in the laboratory or control the environment, that I've gone to the field to do it. I can just flag these pictures. They see me in the real world. 
working. And then showing that what with my students, I don't just send them, I go with them. These are the kind of things I can speak without really uh, saying a lot of them. So use photos, videos, texts, emojis, all of them together to sell your signs. Here, what I can show here, I just added my uh, my recent award in the UK, the Job Medals Prize, um, and the Nigerian High Commissioner there, welcoming me in the award uh, the environment Environmental Post, from Unicode. Also, there are Nigerians that came for the event, they came to Felicite with me. So, why show that picture is not really the award? Because I have another one for the UNESCO Award of them. Why, what I show this for is to see that I have been found worthy to be celebrated by an international media. So when they see here John Medos Prize, which recognized by addressing pollution in Niger Delta. So another news is that the person will know that this is screen, it's not a photograph, it's a screenshot of airing. So that's what I try to show that a media house has found my story are useful enough. So we communicate in this in different ways. And then here I can, I'm showing that I have gone to very poor regions of the world that if your job in my field is even there that I can go, I have an experience. That's what I'm, I'm saying here, not for the fun of laughing. So here I'm showing that I work with white people in the laboratory. I mean, not just white, but people of different race. And color, so I can tolerate them, they can tolerate me, we can work together. So I'm also showing here a group that have some skills in diplomacy, science diplomacy. When you see the flag, like you see a flag of Nigeria, flag of UK, flag of, on a table and people gathered around this, a diplomacy is happening. So that is science diplomacy we have there. Uh, I went to the team from Poland and then this team from Czech Republic. Because we're using science to settle a dispute, um, boundary related disputes, because there was waste generation and dumping at the boundary between Czech Republic and Poland. So my team won a grant to use our science to bring peace between these two countries. And it was very amazing working with the EU on this project. So I'm just trying to show that I have some experience with design diplomacy. And I also try to show here where I'm writing signing autograph for children to show that the children could appreciate what I do at this level, even when they can't think whether it's a good one or not, but they all find out to, to get me signed photograph of their different books. Okay, so also here training children that I can speak clearly to some extent that children from another client can hear me and understand. That's what I was just trying to show there. So try to use your picture, think about, look at picture beyond the individual there. Think about what it can send to the other person, the message. And does that message represent the ultimate destination that you want to get to with your research? Then push them out. The act of tooting at home and getting paid for it is also another thing we need to consider. Toot your home because what we are doing now, whether you call it branding or pride, they are two, uh, two brothers and sisters of different mothers. So being arrogant is not what we want, but being a brand. So that's why we have to do that, unlike the, uh, the pick up. So we pick up, you move, and then you open it up and close it. So that's what we do in science when we're teaching at home. It's not to allow you to stay this way or to, so it can, can be perceived as arrogance. So you toot, and then you come back and get stressed. So don't always forget to toot your mom, but you have to follow the pick-up rule to toot and come back and get the paid for it. When they place value on what you are pushing out there, you start getting money for it. I don't know how much you earn from tooting your mom. So are you comfortable to say I'm at the end of the start? Are you comfortable? If you've got the stuff in there, you shouldn't be uncomfortable. But some persons are somewhat comfortable, some are somewhat uncomfortable. Uh, some are very uncomfortable. I like to hide. Even I have all the things you hide. What do you gain by hiding all the good things and nobody taps them? And on tap talent, you know what those who believe in the Bible, you know what they say will happen to it. 
you have to showcase it so that people can complete the pride of it and use it judiciously and then get disciples that will do that good thing. By the time we have a lot of good things happening, the world is already changing. So this lady, Jenna Bryant, I like what she said uh, about tooting your mom. She said you should toot your mom humbly and consistently. So this is very important, she said, from ACS. So in this 21st century where we are, we need to think about the rules that are changing. And those change. The rules are changing. It's not like those days when people didn't have access to the internet, when there was no digital hope. But now there is. We have to learn how to be citizens, like what the policy taught us. How to be citizens. So if we must, then the rules will change. And we will be part of the change agents. That's why we said we have to help and commit building skills to do it in a professional manner as we are professionals. Remember to help yourself before you help others. You can't start training others when you're not trained. Or you just went for a training. You copied the slides and start taking up trainer position. That's not good enough. You have to practice what you've learned. Get into character with it before you can train others. That's why you play. They say, please help yourself. Wear your mask. There's an agency before you can help your baby, help those who can't help themselves. It's very important in our online uh, world, uh, online world business, trying to get into the online world, create our content, and maximize the potential that are out there. I want to do Chinese whispers at this moment. And let me have you, uh, petroleum engineer, Tata. Are you still with us? You're reflecting. Please let me have you here. And uh, go, let me have you. Uh, who are going to join us? Uh, let's see you. Yes. Come, 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 come. Uh huh. Uh, let's have the dinner completed. Let me have four of you, please. Come. So, I'm going to do some exercise because what's my. My screen started jumping. Okay, so I want you to do some exercise. Now, please follow me. Come here. I'm inviting you. Call it. Inviting you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do something. There are five researchers. I will explain the import of the exercise. So I'm just going to talk to the Dean of Computing, Professor Leticia Onyejibu. When I talk to her, she will tell her what she has. She will tell her what she has. She will tell her what she has. And then I will go to Dr. Colin to tell me what she has. Thank you. Can I resume your seats? Thank you. Let's clap for them. She said, what the unicorn do to scale up its commitment? This is why I'm hammering on the fact that we need to create our content. Information will trickle through the pathway and diminish. I told Professor Leticia, that OWSD report is poised with capacity of building with commitment. <laughs> <laughs> Information got to the last person and OWSD report got lost. <laughs> so, this is a typical, <laughs> this is a typical demonstration of the fact that you should tell your story according to you. Tell your story 
So if you really want to access your content, you need to consider two things. Your digital footprint and your digital shadow. Those are the two, the two fallouts of your content. If these two are not in place, then something will be wrong with your research uh, perception online. The digital footprint and the digital shadow. Like I made the picture smaller of the digital footprint. That what happens in the real life. The digital footprint is your active contribution. Your active contribution to the online world. The interactions you make, you commenting on people's posts and you posting yours, your papers, your engagements that came from you. That's your digital footprint. And your digital shadow is what others have written about you, what they publish about you, what interactions they are making around you. That is your digital shadow. So you can see that the digital shadow is bigger in all respect than your digital footprint. Then what are they saying about you? What are they writing? What is the perception of the online world, the community about you? But I want to advise that you concentrate more on your digital footprint because that's the one you have control over what you put out there that's why you have to consistently and consciously curate your content to what you want your digital footprint and not really your shadows your shadows could be very helpful but we don't have control about it if people put up your if somebody goes somewhere want to come around get your new image taking a shot and you're a scientist and they put it up there the best way to drown that content is to put small what you want people to see you as. That way you drown that content and diminish the shadow that you not represent you. But if the shadow is very good, represent because I tell you to always look at your shadows, but don't focus on it. Focus on your digital footprint, but always look at your shadows. If there are shadows that are good, Keep doing what you're doing is good. Keep doing it. In the long run, push up more what you want people to see. And more maybe you are not doing what you're supposed to do. And you can change your shadow. So don't go chasing the shadow. Wait to write reply to people who are writing what does not represent you. You're chasing shadows. It won't be helpful. Look at these three individuals who are sitting on that platform. Look at what came out on their shadow. Like a young man going to toilets. So the shadow sometimes will falsify the image, the content that you will invite to create. So please focus on your content and create your footprint. So I conclude by saying effective collaboration begins with a good brand. And that brand has to be perceived so not just a good brand. You may have a good brand in you, you may be a good brand. The people are not seeing you as a good brand. So there are there's a problem there. There's a disconnect. So you want to create a good brand, you want to be a good brand, and make people perceive you as a good brand. That what you do with your online presence. Please do. So I want us to use the online tools I have mentioned, promoting your own research, promoting your own research, participating in conversations around topics that you're interested in, you're interested in and then practice the research itself. Very helpful. You must not run to all the all the big share, all of them, to be present in all of them and you can curate your content. It's better and safer than you're one and you're serious with that one. You see the limitations and strengths of all the, of the tools, even when they don't have limitations. So please, if you can get into all of them and do well, fine, but I know if you're a business person, you can't do that. I don't do all of them. So do the ones you can that the strengths reflect more can help you achieve your goal you set for your research and then use them very effectively. An online presence is useless without the work to back up your presentation. So we have to work all the time. So we are done. <laughs> Thank you.